So here's the sine rule. The setup's pretty much the same as for the cosine rule in terms of the triangle we're starting with. So I've got sides A, B, C, and uh, noting the lengths, and angles A, B, and C uh, here. And all that really matters is that angle A is opposite side A, angle B opposite side B, angle C opposite uh, side C. And the cosine, and sorry, the sine rule says that A divided by sine A equals B divided by sine B equals C divided by sine C. And actually, it's just the same to write it upside down as well. Sine sine A divided by A, sine B divided by B, sine C. Uh, divided by c. And um, this can look a bit confusing at first because it's got two equal signs in it. Um, but actually when we use the sign rule we only ever really use it uh, with one of the equal signs. So actually essentially what this is saying is if I take this penny for example I can cover up this one and this statement is true. So because all these three things are equal so these two things are equal. So if I wanted to look at a divided by sine a that's b divided by sine b. I cover up the middle one if I had if I wanted to look at a and a uh, C and C, so I could cover up this one and use this as an equation. Um, so it's really just saying any t we, we can look at any two pairs that correspond A and A, C and C, say, and, and use the and use the that part of the rule. And if it's more convenient, we can flip it upside down and use the rule this way up instead. So um, here's an example on the right. We've got a triangle with lengths 5, 11, 75, and x. So let me just uh, label. Uh, all of the sides, doesn't really matter which one I call A, B and C, so let's have A, B and C like that, and that means that angles A, B and C are uh, A, B and C here. So what we've got is um, uh, an angle and its opposite side, and we've got a side and we're looking for its opposite angle, and that's really what we need for the for the sine rule to be useful. We need two pairs uh, of um, angle on opposite side with just one missing piece of information. So I've got three out of the four things here. So I can use the sign rule with uh, on the A and the B here. So I'm just going to use A over sine A equals uh, B uh, over over sine over sine B. So if I just uh, copy out uh, the rule here, and then I'll fill in um, A and B on the top here. So five uh, and eleven and sine A and sine B on the bottom, so this one is uh, X and sine B, that's sine 75. Now, notice we could have used uh, the equivalent rule down here the other way up, and actually maybe it would be slightly easier to uh, to do that, so um, because I've got sine X on the bottom, I want to solve for X, so it would be better to have this the other way up, so we can just uh, flip it upside down, that's not a problem, sine X divided by 5 equals sine 75 over 11. We're taking the reciprocal of each side of the equation effectively. Um, so sine x multiplying both sides of the equation by 5 is 5 times sine 75 divided by 11. And if we uh, get the calculator out, that's 5 times uh, sine of 75, that's the numerator, uh, divided by 11. Don't worry about the fact that it's given us all these third expressions, it's just a just a number, um, and uh, if we shift sign that then to get back to x, that gives us x equals uh, 26.0 degrees uh, to one decimal place there. As you can see this triangle isn't drawn to scale, 11 should be more than double 5, if it were drawn to scale that would seem like a, a reasonable value. Here's another example um, this time I've got uh, two angles and a side length, and I'm looking for this missing uh, side length. So again, let's just label everything. Uh, doesn't it doesn't matter which letters I use here, A, B, and C, so long as I label the corresponding angles uh, opposite the sides. And this time we've got uh, B and C. So it doesn't really make any difference. It's totally symmetric. Um, so we'll cover up the A one, and we're going to use B over sine B equals C over sine uh, C here, so oops. Um, so A and B, uh, sorry B and C are x and 9.5, so we've got x and 9.5, and the um, angles B and C are 57 and 81. So to work out uh, x, uh, we just need to do 9.5 divided by sine of 81. And then multiply it by sine of 57. So if we get the calculator out to do that, 9.5 divided by sine of 81, and then times it by 
sine of 57, and that gives us the missing length that we need at 8.0, and let's round it up to 7, uh, to two decimal places. So there's two examples of this where the sine rule has been useful, essentially where we've had you know, two pairs of opposite um, side and angles, and um, we've, uh, you know, in the first case, we were missing uh, an angle out of those four bits of information, and here we had one, two, three, four pieces of information, and we were missing one out of them, and it doesn't matter about the, the other pair, we're not using that, we're only using the sine rule uh, two parts uh, out of three at a time, uh, like this. This next example doesn't look that different at first, but it's an important one. Um, so let's just label the sides uh, yeah, as before. Let's have A, B, and C. And the angles here, well, this one will be A. The one opposite the side B is this one, 40 degrees, and the one uh, here, X, is C. Uh, the first thing we just noticed is it's not quite the same as before, in that I said we did need, uh, you know, two pairs, you know, with only one thing missing like 40 and 6 here, but actually we don't have the thing opposite the thing we're looking for. But actually that's not as much of a problem as it as it first looks, because we can just, uh, actually if we just find this angle A first, we can use that to find out uh, the angle X that we're looking for by taking these two away from 180 degrees. So actually what we're going to do is look at uh, A here and uh, B, so let me put my penny over uh, C here. So. Um, uh, filling in what we uh, know here, uh, we've got, um, and actually we're looking for the angle, so let's just remember it's maybe slightly easier to use this uh, form, although both will get you to the same uh, end result. So, um, sine uh, A uh, equals, so divided by A is sine B, and B is 40 degrees, and the lengths A and B are 7 and 6. So we have uh, sine A equals 7 sine 40 divided by 6 and uh, putting that into the calculator um, we get 7 sine 40 divided by 6 so sine A equals 0 0.7409 uh, and then shift sine that inverse sine we get that A is 48.5 degrees and so X is 180 minus 40 minus 48.5 which is 91.4 degrees to one decimal place. Fine, looks like we've solved it. But if we look back to the triangle, well a being 48.5 degrees and X being 91.4 degrees just doesn't seem right, does it? I mean, it just looks totally wrong for the triangle that we've drawn. And otherwise, this triangle doesn't look to be too far out of out of proportion. So I think this hasn't really solved this problem. Um, and the reason that it hasn't is that what we're looking at here is um, an ambiguous case uh, of the of the sine rule. So let me just write that here. This is the ambiguous case. And what I mean by that is that actually, with these same measurements, there is actually another triangle that we can draw that would have exactly the same uh, setup uh, as this one. So actually, if I were to extend this line a uh, long way over here, and then uh, put this down here, actually, if I made this distance six uh, and kept this one a seven, I've still I've still got a triangle essentially with 40 degrees seven uh, and six, and actually. Now this is now my B, it's still opposite this angle B, and my angle A, instead of being here, is here. And this does now seem to fit with what we found, doesn't it? Actually, this one looks about right, look, 48.5 degrees, and this uh, large angle at the top here that would be uh, C, or X, would be 91.4 degrees. So, um, to sort this out and to find the one we actually want, we have to just examine uh, one step in our logic a little bit more carefully, which is when we said that sine A equals 0 0.749 degrees, so that means that A is equal to 48.5 degrees. And if you think back to the work we did on uh, sine, um, and sine for values bigger than 90 degrees, what you see um, is when we're looking for the value of sine A uh, equals 0 0.749, so 
goes up to about 1, so 0.749 is about where I've got my cursor here. Um, between 0 and 180 degrees, there are two values uh, which have that same uh, sign value. So the one that we found, 48.5 degrees, here, well actually there's another one here, which by the symmetry is at 180 minus 48.5 degrees. So actually at this step we could say or 180 minus 48.5 degrees. Um, so that's uh, so that's 131.5 degrees, and that would mean uh, the corresponding value of x would be 180 minus 40 minus 138 31.5, um, which gives us. Uh, 8.5 degrees, and now that looks much more like it satisfies the initial problem. We've got the angle in here of 131.5 degrees, and this angle up here of uh, 8.5 degrees. So you just got to be aware that in some cases where you've got two sides and a non-included angle, and this this ambiguity wouldn't arise if we knew if we were given the angle x here. But when we've got two sides and an angle that's not included, that it can be the case. Uh, depending on the length that we get two uh, possible answers.